All right, now we're going to create a, uh, a pivot table um, with Power Pivot that uses uh, data sources from different sources. And this will allow you to avoid the flattening of data sources, that is, combining data into one table. So we'll start Excel, and I'm going to do a blank workbook. And what I'm going to do, again, we'll go into Power Pivot, and I'm going to Manage. This is the same as we've been doing before, and I'm going to bring it in from a database from SQL Server, and I've got a little bit of a change in here for you. And I'm going to go dot, and which brings you up to localhost. And the first thing I'm going to bring it in from our friend, student, and now I'm going to test connection, and we're good. And we'll go next, and now I'm going to write a query that will specify a result. And we'll go next, and now I'm going to go into design. Okay, and now I'm going to go into import. We've already written these queries for you, and they're in the 50429 uh, SQL uh, folder. 50429 lab folder, they're SQL queries. Student, country, and this is what we're bringing on in. So I'm going to double click it. So I did that, you see, so to prevent you from having to go through and, and type in all this code because we know how much you hate that. And we'll execute the code just to make sure it works. Fine. And what I'm interested in down here, I've got a uh, company name, region, which is generated data. We know that's baloney. Postal code, which is generated data. We know that's baloney. And country down here, which is United Kingdom. So I'm going to say OK. And remember, that came in off of Blue Buffalo Student 2013. And I'll say OK. And I'm done. Finish. Success. It was transferred. And I'll close. And we've got it. Now we're going to bring in from a different database, from database, from SQL. The only thing we're running here is SQL. That doesn't much matter. It's just to show you I'm bringing it in from a different database. They could be bringing it in from whatever, you know, Oracle, you know, uh, Teradata. Da -da 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 -da. Database now I want to bring in is from my data warehouse, Blue Buffalo Data Warehouse 2013. Next. Query. Next, and if I didn't hose this, um, let me give the query a friendly name, and I'm just going to call this DW. I should I should have done that for the other one too, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to call this DW, and uh, I'm going to go to Design, Import, Data Warehouse, Execute. Just Blue Buffalo Data Warehouse. Where I'm bringing this in from? Execute. It worked. You say okay. Uh, never trust this stuff. Always execute and always validate. You know, because if it doesn't work here, it's not going to miraculously start working. And then we'll go finish. 47 rows, sounds fine to me. And close. And now I've got DW down here and query. Now I'm going to rename this. Oh boy. And hope it works. Sometimes I. We, we run into issues on these renames when we're remoting in and all that other baloney. And I'm going to rename this as student. By the way, if you're working with this stuff and she attempts to freeze on you, which she just did, it's renaming all the objects. If you just be patient, which is something I should really learn in my life, then it will normally work. All right, that normally has it once it's, once it's responsive. Okay, it did. So now we're going to go in and I'm going to um, create a relationship. So that's going to go into diagram view. And here's my two tables down here. And if you remember, country is not what we think. We want region tying into region. All right, so, and, and you do that by examining your code. Yeah, I'm being aware of the way your data works. So I'm going to right click down in here. I'm going to say uh, create relationship from the student, which is the name of the query, and region. And my lookup table is from my data warehouse. And this should be region country name. And let's click create. And if it doesn't throw up on me, cool. Now it's created that relationship in there. So I've got a relationship. Now those of you that were particularly sharp in that last one when I came through and created the cascading relationship, you've automatically figured this out. 
So now I've got off of one database, I found a region that I can tie into a region country code down here. So anything off that data warehouse that I can click, 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 create cascading relationships off of, I can come off of one data source and go into the other data source. And that is extraordinarily powerful. Okay, let's go over into data view. And just for laughs, let's um, create a pivot table. Uh, new worksheet sounds fine to me, I don't care. New worksheet, and if I expand out data warehouse and region country name and expand out student, uh, student is just the name of the query, and go of company name. Now I see in the United, now you see this, so I, I use the student database and tied in its region over to the region country code. So now I could zip on across and I could start bringing together data such as. <laughs> What did these folks over here in student, you know, tie in and buy within the data warehouse, on and on and on and on. And the mind boggles. Very good. Now let me save it. Save as, and let me save it over in 50429, and I've already got it saved in here, so I'm, I'm not really going to save mine, but you want to go in and save it with uh, in your student database with some kind of a name that will identify it, whatever you like or whatever is written in the lab, save it as. I'll cancel out of this. Good enough.